Hey, Mark. Who is that? Is that Phil? Hey, and Bob Rogers and and Craig. And my goodness, I think there's John Smoot there and John Patton. Yeah. Hey, Herb, how are you? I'm doing okay. Look at all these guys. Uh, I'm waiting to see. Let's see. And we're being joined by a younger gen generation, Alessini. <laughs> And there's Sluggo. Yeah, my end. Yes, I'm in. Hey, oh, Smooter. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Hello. John. Let me smile. Howdy, howdy. Let me make sure I've gotten everybody. We've. Whoa. Mark, <laughs> Craig, Bob, um, Craig. We're being joined by uh, a younger generation that uh, knew Scott well as the advisor. So Rick Smith and John Lee. Um, and uh, some other names will pop up. This is the latest. So. Hey, hey. Everybody, Everybody you guys look so damn young. I believe. Oh, yeah. Our buddy. And John Anderson. Hey. hey, Bart. Hey, hey. Bart. <laughs> That's true. I must be in the wrong place. Back. And there's John the Garliano. Holy hey, shit. And Everybody looks so old. Yeah, I don't. I think I'm on the wrong. I think I'm on the wrong Zoom meeting. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say old, but I decided ugly is better. Yeah. There we go. Hi guys. Especially Sluggo. Is is this a remake? Uh, Mark, is this a remake of the movie Cocoon? <laughs> yeah, just show me where the pool is. I, I would be all for that. Yeah. Oh my God! You guys have gotten so old. <laughs> <laughs> and here's K Man. Dave Cruz joins us. All right, momentarily. There he is. Cruz. Or he's just an icon at this point. No, it's John. Huh? Is, that, is that you, Dave? Yeah. Hi there. Oh, there he is. Yeah, all right. He doesn't look so old. <laughs> Hi, guys. Really, if, it, if anybody deserves to be on screen, it's Dave Cruz. <laughs> is, it, is it okay to drink wine at a, wait, at a Zoom wake? No, no, it's not. <laughs> no way. It's not? Oh. I would hate that. Now we're about to be joined by someone I haven't seen in years, Bill Betts. Whoa. Oh, yeah, wow. Look at that blast from the past. He owes me money from UCLA day. <laughs> I'll let you guys work that out. All right. Hey, Kenny, you're called Chris. Where's that John? Did Bill Betts appear? Where is he? Huh? Where's John? Thought because it was Scott, I'm going to drink some good scotch for him tonight instead of a beer. Is that Scott Carpenter? Or I mean, Steve Carpenter's hairline? Oh, yeah, it is. Wow. <laughs> and there's the oh. iPad joining us that has no name attached to it. And here's Wade, I believe. Where? <laughs> well, that's uh, my pet. We call him iPad. <laughs> oh, All iPad. I can do is click the button. <laughs> and we make this show even more people. Uh, I think I I'll wait till 7.30 when all the friends join. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to see everybody. Uh. Well, it kept Goodbye. growing. Uh, Park <laughs> kept <laughs> passing the, the uh, link around and which I have no problem with. I just no technology. Hey, here's he head. He head. 
Did, right. did we really all go to college together? You guys look great. <laughs> <together. laughs> no way. <laughs> we survived it. <laughs> yeah. Several, Where's Mr. Yamamoto? <laughs> there's, there's Tomato Head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's Wade. Yeah. Hey, Patty. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. Hello. Yeah. This, is, this is Fred, but on the week, this is Fred, but on the weekends I go by Paula. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Patty, and hi, Gary. Hi. You guys are up yeah. in Big Bear. Every we're time I Big see Bear. you, you're in Big Bear. We're in Big Bear, where we wow. met when the Delts had their weekend at Boulder Bay. Isn't that amazing? I, I remember that day very well. Yes, <laughs> I remember too. Those those kids from Drowning, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was Bob Lash. <laughs> was Lash. It, was Ward, it was Ward was it? Uh, Ward right. Brand that had the uh, yeah. lodge up here. Yeah. Right, but uh, Bob Lesh is the one who pulled them out of the frozen waters. Yeah. But then you, you gave then up they, your... Then we wrapped my freshman basketball jacket around one of the, well, the gal that they pulled out and they rushed her off to the hospital and that's the last <laughs> I ever saw of my jacket. <laughs> well, it's a worthy cause. Yeah. Mark, I thought you did all of the above. I no, I didn't. No, me, and, <laughs> me, and Wargo, <laughs> me and Wargo sat on a big rock drinking wine from a Boda bag. And Wargo <laughs> said, watch, this girl's going to fall through the ice. Oh, man. We made no move to stop her. We just watched it. <laughs> we knew that Bob Lesh would pull her out. Chris <laughs> Lesh. Yeah. Do you guys remember my first I wife, Chris? Hey, hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, hey Chris. Good. I'm good. Hi, Chris. I'm good. Chris. You guys are all good? We're all good. Yeah, yeah, well, good. Under the circumstances. Uh, yes. Uh, Donna and I got our first shot uh, yesterday. All right. Oh, so that, was, that was progress. Yeah. yeah we got our Ryan and I did as well. Ago. Yeah. Who got yes, their I, first shots? We did. We did. Yeah, we Congratulations. Did. Yeah, I we did. did. We did. We did. Yeah. Who else has yeah. their second? Yeah. Oh, there's Bob Lesh, the hero. <laughs> Where's Bob Lesh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Bob Lesh. I'm the one that still looks really young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your dreams. Yeah. yeah don't put well. that out to a vote. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Cram is the judge of whether we look young or not. Oh, I'll be, that'll okay. be fine. I'll be the judge. So who's judging him? Hey, hey. hey. I'm just saying. Someone with better eyesight than him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, you have an age today. Oh, oh yeah. Crap. Your glasses aren't so good either. Well, hang on. Let me, let me clean those. Hammy, <laughs> hey, I mean, you were always swayed. Oh, man. Hey, but we... We yeah. see him at the ballpark, and I can attest to that. Yeah. Good evening, Hammy. Hey, good to see you, Vince. Where's Vince? Vincey, hey, over there. Yeah. Are those? Hey, Vince, are those real books behind you, or is that just kind of a backdrop? Uh, believe it or not, they are real. Most of the ones you're looking at are from sailing, but uh, oh. the, the veterinarian ones are off to the side. Oh, okay. <laughs> know that feeling. Yeah. I used to oh, I missed I miss Vince. Where say something so the algorithm brings you up. Vince, talk to I me. Yeah, I said, Mark, I'm drinking a good oh, scotch there he is. There he is. for a scot instead of a beer. I thought he deserves some Avalor tonight. Oh wow. Hey Vince, it's great to see you. It's been well, way then. too long. Wow. Absolutely has been. Hey, one of our pledge brothers, John. I know. And I just Hi, um, I just got a um, email from YD, who says he can't join us tonight. Oh. Where's uh, Where's Bill Swartfeger now, Vince? You know I couldn't track him down. He he's in Bakersfield. He stays yeah. pretty incognito, and and I he grew said, up with the guy, and I I, I feel bad about it. I, I just oh. he said he doesn't zoom yet, and. Uh, 
to remember Scott's version of American Woman. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have Thank the you, John, you're right. Oh, yeah. They don't have the internet in Bakersfield yet, do they? <laughs> well, no. It's coming oh, up. Al Gore hasn't been there fall. yet. <laughs> not for certain people, right? <clears throat> they, must, they must not have it in Canada either. <laughs> Where's the one? You know, we talked to Dave last night, Mark, uh, Donna and I did. So, yeah. He was planning on dialing in. Something must have popped up. So, this one's. Yeah. Um, well, you know the situation with Jeanette, right? Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Who's Jeanette? No, what I don't. Dave's wife, yeah. Dave's wife. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Look, looking like um, early signs of dementia and. Oh, boy. I got that. Is, Feel bad for me. Um, <laughs> YD is moving into the caretaker oh boy. Um, role. So mm. having seen my mom assume that mm. role for my father, I have some idea what's in store for him. Yeah, it's um, tough. And it's very tough. So um, if, if we Mark, if we live long enough, we'll all be in that situation one way or the other. I mean, it's, much. Yeah. that's how it works. And uh, it's not pretty, but it's, it's needed. So. Yeah. And I keep reminding myself, oh, well, that's okay. This is just a phase we're going through. It, <laughs> it is. It'll only get better. <laughs> no. <laughs> if we, if we wow. just work out a little harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or take the right drugs. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking Ponce de Leon may have had the right idea. I'm going to try that path. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck with Florida. <laughs> hey, Sluggo. Yeah. What's up with Rollo? Well, I sent him uh, uh, a copy of the email. He's in Arkansas. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> They don't have internet. They don't have internet either, just like Bakersfield. <laughs> he's not as mobile. He's got MS, so he's not. Um, oh, mm. yeah. So he's kind of uh, in a in a chair most of the time. So, but uh, you know, he moved from his house on the lake to the one in town, so he could be next to his uh, daughters. Uh, mm. Nice. So I go, uh, this is, wait, I, the last time I saw your brother, uh, Don and I were living in Arkansas. Uh, we <laughs> were there for, let's say, 1980, for a year and a half. And our daughter, Sarah, was born there. But, but we went up to Fayetteville, you know, Bentonville, where he was, but Fayetteville and made a loop and dropped by his house. And he was riding around on a, on a big tractor, you know, mowing the front. 40 you know and, and but i have not talked to him since i you know departed arkansas well he moved from that house to another house on the lake which didn't have yeah. yep. because he was right next to a uh like a forest uh with that uh, that yeah. house you saw him at and then he was on the lake and he had a house that uh, had a private lake and he had a boat and all that kind wow. of cool and now he's he's in town not in uh bentonville but in little rock Hmm. Or no, Fayetteville. He's in Fayetteville. Fayetteville. Yeah. Fayetteville. Yeah. Trinidad and I stayed in Fayetteville, the university there, driving through there at the Delt House. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. You well, and Kiernan? Yeah. Back when you had one of them oh. things called a surf bard on top of your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went to Bentonville. Did you go to his office? His his uh, office that was on that town square. I I did not just like I we just saw him at his house. It was in the town square. Yeah. Where the original Walmart was. Really? Wow. Yeah. Hey, hey has anyone heard from uh, Bill Betts? Well, he's supposedly on this call, right? Bill, are you he still was. with us? He was a little bit ago. Oh, was he? I missed him. He might have lost it. I saw it come I, I let him in. He may have uh, seen exactly who was on this call. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. He owes me money. He's, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. 
So it was that. you, Ken. Yeah. So um, we got 45 minutes before the rest of the group uh, joins us. Um, I'm recording this, and part of what I want to do is present this to Georgine, who is not joining us. Georgine, by the way, is Scott's mom, um, who was still at 95 huh? with us. Um, so I was hoping we could just kind of go through the group, including those newer guys, Rick and John and, and Tim, some of those guys um, who know Scott from Carnias and things like that uh, in the 80s, and just uh, give us a favorite story or reflection, something that um, um, reminds you of Scott. So um, I'm well, just- Mark, uh, can, I, can I go first? I have a sure, short John. story that, that mom might like to hear. Uh, Scott uh, was a dear friend, like all of us here, loved him. But when I remember when I first met him, uh, he became a roommate or next door neighbor his parents were going to come to visit the Dell house. Oh, no. <laughs> ask me for advice. My parents had come to the Dell house like the year previously, and they were appalled by the abundance <laughs> of beer and the smell of brewery. They went to Mark. At the Scott. So I, the advice I gave him is do not come on a Sunday morning. <laughs> on a maybe Sunday afternoon, make sure there wasn't a party. And... The parents came, I met them, I dressed up, and I said hi to them. And that's all I remember. But uh, I think they were impressed. They let Scott Sorry. stay in the Dow House. So, victory. <laughs> so we good. have you to thank, Smooter, that um, he was able to sustain his adult life. <laughs> well, I was a factor, maybe, but I remember one more remembering of him. Uh, when he came through Rush, do you guys remember Rush? <laughs> it was a crazy time, but yeah. I I deadly. his steady handshake, it was a strong one. Uh, he looked you in the eye, and he had a smile on his face. And I think that continued for the time that I knew him. It never changed. Well, more important than Rush is how you guys all made it through Hell Week. I can't see that now. I just don't know. <laughs> that basement that we had, how do you guys remember all that? Oh, we do. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spoke out, sitting on the ice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite different, different than Rush. <laughs> Sluggo, you took a lot of punishment, and you wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> you <didn't> asked for it. <laughs> I, have a, I have a little story. <laughs> Who's Can I share? Go one? ahead. Well, you know, one of the my favorite stories that I tell everybody is. The Delt House had just looked like trash constantly, and my parents never came, thankfully. But my mom, we did put out a, 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 a plea to the Mother's Club to donate money so we could buy new furniture. And they, we like collected $10,000. <laughs> and somebody said, who needs furniture? Let's have a party. <laughs> and so we got the Gamma Phi Beta House, you know, the girls over on Hillguard that were our little sisters. Yeah. They borrowed their furniture, and when the Mother's Club came to play bridge, we had their furniture, and they thought, oh, you boys did such a nice job, and they were so pleased, and they gave us even more money in another party, and gave the girl, the Gamma Phi Beta girls back their furniture. <laughs> just well, flat if, if they, they knew. only knew... If they, if they only knew that we had parties where we threw furniture off the third deck just to see it crash. <laughs> and the piano, remember the piano going down the stairs? Oh, yeah. And we beat you with a shackle from shot at the bell, at the buzzer. And we. Yeah. And when, the, when the fire department came, we got yes. the fire department. And we were all up down. on the roof. We were yeah, on the roof. from the roof. <laughs> we, we hosed down the fire department. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, Mark, I, let me say a couple of things. Um, you know, Scott was a pledge brother and an amazing, amazing, uh, positive person. I, I, out of all the things that we went through in the Delta House, I never saw him angry. He was always upbeat, right. even in Hell Week. And I thought, who is this guy? You know, I mean, Hell Week, we're getting 
you know, sort of pushed around a little bit. And, and uh, so that, that was number one, but two, uh, his father was on the, the housing corporation for the Delta house. So oh, he God. got all the accounts along with the other people on that board and they knew what we were up to a bit. <laughs> <laughs> some of the things anyway but he you know he was just a happy he was happy as well he was a very very nice gentleman and he was trying to help us out oh, and yeah. then uh, but but scott was so um upbeat and positive great lawyer and we talked in the last quarter you know about music and politics and <laughs> politics and music and back and forth uh, very uh, positive individual uh, and it's sad to see him not with us. But I remember that Scott, and what I said in first response to Mark's initial announcement of this is that Scott Neely, more than any other of the Delt brothers I've known, <laughs> exemplified a, a joie de vivre, a true joy of life, and that it's very hard to think of Scott without seeing a smile or somebody ready to break out in a rock and roll song. You know, Scott was the party. When Scott was there, the party began. Just a good guy. <laughs> or he started the party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I agree he, with he usually what finished. Wade said. <laughs> it, you know, he was always uplifting. If you're in a bad mood, just go hang out with Scott and you're not in a bad mood after a short period of time. That's just who he was. I want to comment uh, a bunch of you guys. You must have gone to other schools afterwards because some of the uh, tributes you wrote were incredibly, really, really well done. <laughs> <laughs> Graduate school and law school will do that to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of that, let me share a story because you guys have been talking about music and law school. Scott and I lived together um, for my first year of law school down in Daly City when he was uh, going to USF at the time. <laughs> and uh, I remember in November of 73, The Who uh, was playing at the Cow Palace. And so we got tickets to go and we had uh, pretty good seats. I think we were about 10 rows back or so. And you know how Scott loved to do the air guitar. Oh, yeah. And so he was just in heaven. Uh, but I remember that was when Keith Moon was still with the group, but he was having his problems. And after uh, either the first or second song, he passed out. So <laughs> we had a. Uh, Otter Keith. Uh, Keith. And so Pete Townsend is looking out at the audience and saying, Does anybody out there know how to play drums? And of course, Scott would have loved to have gone up and done it, but um, we ended up with about a half hour break until they finally found a drummer. But that was a, a concert that Scott just loved. Do you know how much he loved The Who? Uh, yeah. hey, Bob, do you remember that I was there yeah. with you? No. Uh, no, I don't, but I'm glad you were. Somebody's you remember be I'm the one who drove? DJ. What's that? You remember I'm the one who drove? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm lucky I remember that far back, Mark. <laughs> Good thing you were driving, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> well, particularly under the uh, condition I was in. Hey, Bill Betts is coming back. Where's Bill Betts? Well, he's about to he fake like he was coming in before. So, Mark, did, did we enjoy the concert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, for years, I've told people I was at that concert, and you'll see a little bit of it later in this video that I've... I, I remember you. I remember you telling me that Keith Moon passed out at that time. Yeah, and that this guy <laughs> popped out of the crowd and played drums. Wow. And, uh, and for years, I've told people I was at that concert, and it's, oh, you're kidding, you were there? I <laughs> Dude, I, I've almost scored with women on that. <laughs> almost, almost. Key word, almost. Yeah. Mark, who drove home? That's a that's a big key word for me. <laughs> Mark, who drove home? Um, I did. <laughs> well, 
Oh, I locked my keys in the car. Oh, there's the <laughs> girl you picked up there. So that right, parent. Right. Uh rebound yes. was good. Scoring was. Uh, yeah. So Bill, are you here? <laughs> Bill no. Betts. Was there another page? <laughs> yes. Who is that? It should be. Well, there is another page. There is should another, be another one. There is another page, yes. You got to slide it to the right or the left, I mean. Oh, you got two of two. <laughs> well, sp speaking of driving, I'll throw in a story. Um, Scott was my big brother uh, as well. I guess he's uh, was the big brother of several of us. And uh, when John Legro passed uh, several years ago, um, Scott and I carpooled um, for that event. And it was kind of an interesting experience to uh, get to know Scott all over again, you know, um, whatever it was, you know, 30 years after UCLA. And it was an uh, enlightening experience to see that Scott, very little about Scott had changed. His positive demeanor, his uh, great attitude, his smile, uh, his cheerfulness. We were laughing and joking the whole way uh, back to Northern California, and I dropped him back at his home in Redwood City. It was a gr great experience to uh, relive Scott Neely once again. I've heard his name a lot. Well, I'll, I'll jump in and share quick three quick stories I remember of Scott. Uh, <clears throat> as already been said, and maybe doesn't even need to be said again, how joyful and full of life he was, but uh, three stories involved involving cars. Uh, the first one. Now, didn't he? Didn't he drive a Comet station wagon? Didn't he? Yes. Have that? Yep. Okay. So here's uh, here's Neely, and he's working for the Daily Bruin, I think typesetting or something. And one one night late after a uh, basketball game, he had to get this typeset over to wherever it was, Burbank or somewhere where they ran off this paper. So he jumps in his Comet, and I and I went with him. And he raced it over there just in time to get it done. You know, he was, and all the way he was just cursing and swearing and upset because he was <laughs> knowing he was going to be late, but he made it. And, uh, and that was the first story. The second one, he and I were going to Northern California, maybe to a Cal game or something in his Comet station wagon. And we're going over Pacheco pass and I'll be darned if uh, a deer jumps out in front and we hit the deer, killed the deer and, and wrecked his car pretty good, but we made it over the hill, went wow. to the game, but uh, all the way, uh, and I think maybe the reason the deer jumped out, we were listening to his eight track playing the doors, <laughs> and, and at full volume, Scott was singing his lungs out, typically. <laughs> the third one, Mark, <clears throat> includes you, and uh, for a short time, we, uh, Mark and, uh, and Scott and Fred and I shared an apartment down in Venice, if you remember that, Mark. Yes, the year of the earthquake. In the video as well. Right. Yeah, it was the just, year of the earthquake. Right. 50 years ago, uh, just a couple of days ago, the earthquake hit. And uh, if I remember clearly, uh, the door jammed. We couldn't get out of our apartment that morning until we pulled on it pretty hard. But the thing I remember mostly, doggone it, Mark, we had that, we had that crazy Volkswagen bus, and we had to push that thing every time to get it jump started. <laughs> that was like Fox. Yeah. I, had one, I had one of those. I had one of those. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, the thing Definitely. I remember about that earthquake is the night before the football team had their postseason beer bust um, <laughs> at this Orhouse like place on Washington Boulevard in um, the marina. And it was, you paid 20 bucks and it was unlimited amounts of beer and uh, all girls got in free and uh so i just you know was hung over like crazy sleeping on this new thing they called water beds <laughs> <laughs> and uh the earthquake hit and it was all i could do to <clears throat> keep last night from Joining the liquid of the room. <laughs> but uh, we woke up and I called my parents because for some reason I thought the earthquake would be worse in San Francisco. So 
I, I called them to see if they were okay. And we went back to sleep and it was only at 11, like when we normally got up um, and discovered that uh, people were killed in Silmar and, oh shit, I guess we better take this seriously. Come on guys, <laughs> come help me start my car. <laughs> Let's go That's save right. people. Hey, Hawk. Oh. I was in my waterbed at the Dell House too. <laughs> Is that <Slosh>. right? <laughs> yeah, I remember being in the Dell House with uh, in bunk beds that Carpenter and I built. I think it was room two or whatever, and just being bounced against the ceiling, being on the top and down and up, and that was okay. a. a the Dell House rocked and rolled during that. Uh, yes, it did. Yeah. yeah, but Gary, Gary, this is Fred, but you had a woman with you. <laughs> that is right here. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I didn't see her. Sorry. <laughs> I thought she was out of the out of the picture. Uh, so where did Car where'd Carpenter go? I don't know. Disney. I've got a I've got a, a few stories about Scott. They're 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 vignettes, but go for it. Yeah, I you know, like you said, like all of you guys said, he was one of the nicest guys I ever met in my life. He was always upbeat. He was always passionate about life. He was your friend. Mm -hmm. and you knew it. Uh -huh. And I never I never had a moment with Scott Daly that wasn't fun. But, right. but some of the really fun things were he and I uh, watched three Super Bowls together. One of them we went to at Stanford. And, wow. you know, he was just, that was a great game. And he was just so happy. We were both big 49er fans. Both of us moved to the Bay Area from, from you know, from UCLA. And um, he just was so happy then. And then another event that I remember, uh, he went to law school at USF and uh, Wade and Kiernan and I all went to law school at Santa Clara, all in the Bay Area. And Neely calls me up one night and he says, hey, BB King's coming into town, come on up. <laughs> so I, I jammed, I don't know how I got up there. I probably had to hitchhike or something, but Anyway, I got up there and Neely and I went and saw B.B. King and we were, you know, we were 10 rows from the stage standing. We weren't sitting. And man, that was one of the best times I had in my life. And all the way home, we're just, you know, Neely's just playing the air guitar and driving, <laughs> you know, he was, he was a real prince. And, you know, I know we all miss him and, uh, I'm just glad he was in our lives. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll step in. I'll step in real quick. John, very nice. Good, good memory. When I ended up at UCLA in 1969 as a freshman, um, Scott was my roommate. John. And I can't, I can't quite remember if, if it was right the first quarter, or the second quarter, but I knew right away that um, he was a special guy. He had a big heart. I mean, mm -hmm. he would he would do yeah. anything for you. And the other thing that I'll, I'll remember about Scott was he was a charmer. And it, it came from that big heart. He didn't have to put on any kind of airs or he, he could charm the daylights out of anybody. And I remember, we came up to Berkeley, I think it was the Cal game. He was probably driving that, that Comet, but I wanted him to meet my parents. And um, like Wade was saying, his dad was a Delt, my dad was a Delt. Uh. My parents got on with, with Scott like a house on fire. I mean, they loved this guy. They couldn't believe it. They wanted to come down to the Delt house and meet him and I, I sort of had to say, no, you really don't need to do that. But <laughs> in, their, in, in, in their minds, in their minds if, if the rest of the Delts were like Scott Neely, I, you know, their, their son was, was in a, a pretty golden place. And, <sighs> um, 
Little did they know the debauchery that was going on, and, and, and what, what we really needed was like lawyers, guns, and money, but we got through it. Sounds like they liked uh, Scott, but then liked you. Well, that, that was probably part of the, it was the son they never had. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can second that. My mom loved Scott. I mean, there was um, um, a connection that parents, you know, of, of our age, people, you know, that extended to other friends. He, a, a charmer uh, came in is is the way to phrase it. Um, Eddie Haskell out of. <laughs> say all the right things and 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 he meant it and yeah he meant it uh, yeah yeah i had no problems bringing scott neely home some of the rest of you like when i brought <laughs> lampson and yamanas home <laughs> in the spring of 1969 we all had wine stains on our shirts <laughs> yeah, that was memorable. a different subject <laughs> my, my most memorable moment with scott was I was, I lived on the opposite side of the hall on the second floor and I came out of my room one day and his door to his room opened up and he was going wild with light my fire, swinging his head around, <laughs> singing as loud as he could for the whole dealt house to hear him. Yeah. It was like, what was brought good. this on? I didn't have any idea, <laughs> but it was him. It was just all of him. Yeah. It was crazy. He was, he was a joy. Indeed. So Scott, Scott, Scott. Uh, got another short story about Scott. He was kind of our social, social chairman. You know, he got us all together every few years. I think the most recent one was the uh, Delt bus. Mark, I could be wrong. I don't, I think he was involved with that uh, from 649 Gailey, you know, to the football game, I think it was 2006. I know it's oh, not going yeah, there, I remember yeah, that, yeah. I remember you. Uh, but anyway, I think he was involved with arranging that. He did that quite often, and he he made sure the Delts got together from time to time. Once they weren't living, you know, in the area there, and I think that was a good thing. Uh, it was not too often, but it was sufficient. You know, uh, anything else would have been surplus. He did about the right amount, I think. And I really sorry about personally. I missed the 2018 get together. I had a family thing going on, couldn't make it. That would have been a good thing to get to. But I remember Scott did that. He pulled them, he pulled us together, some of us older guys that had been graduated. So thank him for that. Mark, um, do you remember uh, when you? you and Scott uh, and Kiernan and I took over a condominium in uh, Venice for a period of time? And we would play, uh, we would play golf, you know, golf club, uh, you know, hockey, you know, with a real golf ball in the living room there. And you were the announcer and you, you would yell out face off and we, but we never got killed. We could have lost an eye, I think. But we, and we didn't break much, you know, so it was not bad. You'll uh, be seeing some super eight footage of that living room in the video. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, along a, with the um, the late great um, Bob Kiernan, and it should be mentioned, Fred brought this up to um, bring up some of our our brothers who are no longer with us. Starting with Lee Adams, who uh, um, tragically left us back when we were young. all adults and living together. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. And um, extending to Bob Kiernan and to John Legro and now uh, to Scott. Am I missing anybody? Uh, Pat Lamundin. Pat Lamundin. Yeah. Yeah. Pat Lamundin, the whale. The whale. The speaking, <laughs> speaking of the Mother's Fund, the, <laughs> that, party, that party in Santa Barbara at Refugio was pretty uh, stellar. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. I do too. <laughs> Friday night we went out and got dollar fifty a gallon uh, quality reserve uh, red and uh, red and, and we drank we drank most of it before we 
went to sleep and then we spent most of the next morning and day in the sand face down. That's right. <laughs> hey, whoever, whoever had the uh, formula for the Red Death? Red Death Punch. Red Death Punch. Where did that I think that, from? It was, that was universal. Yeah, I guess it was just whatever you had. Didn't we make it? Oh, no, was no, a lot of vodka. It was, it was, it was Hawaiian Punch and vodka. I was or Hawaiian punch somebody and vodka worked in chemistry. Ice. Somebody worked in chemistry and could get a hundred proof. Yeah, <laughs> was you, had ice. you had to make ice. Ice. Yes. Well, you know, yeah. ethyl alcohol though, there was more than a hundred proof. Well, yeah. yeah, it was. I don't know what the hell it was, but it was wicked. <laughs> ethyl alcohol, I think he, somebody brought from the chem lab. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget going with a buddy of mine, Ed Coupe. Some of you guys met him. Yeah. He, played, he and I played football together, and. There was a party at the Delta House, and I didn't have a date. And Alice Cooper, oh, what a surprise! Knew, nobody knew <laughs> was playing at uh, the uh, student union. So Coupe came over. We were going to go see the uh, Alice Cooper, but they were serving Red Death. We left, and the party was starting. People were sipping. We saw, I would say, an hour's worth of music. We came back. And it was like Pompeii after the <laughs> eruption. <laughs> Bodies were frozen on the staircase where, <laughs> where they had just fallen. I mean, they were, where's the thrill in that? I mean, no one survived this thing. It is interesting if you Google Red Death, you know, while I was sitting there, you Google Red Death, it's a picture of the Delt House in a bathtub. <laughs> and a, and a list of the victims. Hey, hey, come on. When we when we got upper class with the Red Death, we got a brand new garbage can and lined it with a plastic bag. Oh, oh and, a, uh, and a new plastic bag. <laughs> we used to have a huge leather thing that we hung on the closet, though. Yeah, yeah. What about yeah, the boat? Yeah, had a a big boat bag with spigots on the side. Yeah, yeah that's that? what I remember. Yeah. Exactly. And, and we ladled it out of the garbage can, Bart? I guess we did. Absolutely. <laughs> what I remember is the sticky floors on Sunday morning. Oh, oh the God. smell. Clean them up. <laughs> and the smell. Yeah. And the smell. <laughs> well, uh, Who was in charge of ever cleaning up? Did anyone ever clean up? Pledges. We had work parties. The oh, pledges. The pledges had work parties. That's right. We have a work party. <laughs> That's what pledges are for. <laughs> exactly. We did a lot of beer surfing. <laughs> Remember the fl the floor sloped a little bit. There's always about four inches of beer in one corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's that's the part you'd hit on a dead walk into the kitchen trying to get a glass of milk, and you'd hit that little spot, and go whoop, and then land in it, and you got beer on the back of. <laughs> it was also a challenge to. Um, Mark, to get some good food out of that kitchen. Yeah. You know, Mary I Brown just the lady's happen. name, but Mary Brown. You know the, the membership. You know, totally it's a matter. You don't like you don't like raisin her. sauce. Yeah, and, and so I had to fire the cook, and I said, you know, it's over. I'll drive you home. You know, but and and so I walked down the stairs between the SAE house and the Delt house, and. Um, she came screaming after me down Gailey Avenue saying that she <laughs> was going to put a hex on my family right. and a curse. And uh, I ended up with draft number 30, you know, so I think she might have been, I had a good time, actually a good experience in the Navy, but she, you know, we, we did some stuff and we ate some food there that wasn't the best. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, delivering that message to to her, uh, you know, it was not a nice one, but it, it was essential. Was that uh, Billy Lively? Was that her name? Uh, no, Bill, no, Lively. Yeah, Billy Lively, Lively was a different character, yeah. Okay. I might have had to fire her. Uh, Billy Lively. Yeah, first yeah no, she was drug out. Billy and Lively and her mother. Yeah. After Billy brought her mother. Friendship on the set. No, no, no. Yeah. After <laughs> Billy Lively, Grossman was our cook. Yeah, okay. uh, what about Cleveland? <laughs> Cleveland came so, before. Cleveland yeah. was before. 
Yeah. 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 Was, was, uh, when oh. I pledged and had to work the kitchen, you know, on Monday nights, pledges had to dress up and serve you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah, Cleveland was that. the cook. Yeah. But I don't, I think he lasted the rest of the year till he made, the end of spring of 69. Yeah, he made the yearbook in 69. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I thought Steve Carpenter is still on the call. Steve, yeah, I'm still here. here. Yeah, yeah. Well, he orchestrated something at Delta Airlines that I don't think anyone today could ever do, and it was a Delta picture for the UCLA annual. Yeah, right. Well, that was great. It was yeah. incredible, and he got somehow he got access to the tarmac. Oh and yeah. They, and they agreed to to take out the A in Delta. They did that obviously digitally or. The way they did it at the time. I have that picture. That was it's great. incredible. <laughs> but, it's in the but, uh, Steve, it's an amazing picture, but yeah. I don't see how you got mm. through all the security <laughs> to allow <laughs> us totally guys to wait. Do, wait, do you remember there? They we also had a urinal with a sticky back yeah, yeah, stuck and, on and, the wall, and, and Steve yeah. was using it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. I don't see how he got access to LAX. I mean, it was. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't remember. I, I don't, but I, I do remember the picture. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what Scott found that I think I have someplace is the Jansen sweater. Yeah, yeah. Picture. Uh, Apperson's got that. And Apperson Vince? has that. Or yeah. that's right, John that has that. Yeah. Because I, I'm so pissed. I missed out on that. And that was taken my pledge quarter. Free sweater. Might be good. Yeah, free yeah. sweater. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a great sweater? Free sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody looks so clean cut back then. That's about it. Probably were. No Cholula, no nothing. You know, the so, thing that I remember most about Scott is my first night at the Dell House. Um, None in the cabinet either. Was, <laughs> as you guys remember, I was brought into the Dell House. I didn't know anybody, but thanks to Mary Lou Limerick. Oh, yes. Mary Lou. <laughs> Mary Lou, I knew in the dorms, and I had had a good night playing basketball, and so she thought, if she could get me to pledge the Delt House that you guys would make her a little sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we would have. She brought me down to the Delt House and the first guy I met walking up the steps was Coochie smoking a joint. <laughs> 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 and uh, Mary Lou said, so this is Mark Wright. He scored 22 points last night. She gave him all these stats and he looked at me and said, far out. <laughs> and I walked up and to make a long story short and Slogo, you can maybe verify this. I ended up in the pledge room playing Thumper with Sluggo and others. And the more I played Thumper, the funnier I got. <laughs> hey, Mark, if it, if it was Coochie, he was smoking a joint and he had a bottle of VO upside down his hip pocket. Well, that probably is true too. I wasn't hip to looking for that. And he had Judy anyway. With... I uh, I started cutting up with the guys playing thumper, and all I heard for about an hour was, "You got to wait to for later. You got to wait to meet Neely. You got to meet Neely." I said, "Who's Neely? You just got to meet him." <laughs> You're going to love them. <laughs> and I'll never I was, forget I, finally I, when the Thumper game ended and he got off his shift at uh, the Daily Bruin, he uh, was coming up the stairs and I was going down the stairs. <laughs> and uh, somebody said, um, So uh, this is Neely. And he immediately launched into this uh, impersonation of Professor Philip Harris. <laughs> who was his professor. I never heard the guy. <clears throat> but apparently he talked like this. Well, that's <laughs> wonderful, Mark. It's wonderful to have you in the house. My goodness. My goodness. I understand you're a basketball player. Well, that's <laughs> wonderful. 
<laughs> so uh, and he started I going little... off on this character, and the next thing I know, we're riffing on this thing, and <laughs> apparently, uh, it was meant to be. So yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Neely uh, saved my life uh, one night, um, and uh, certainly perplexed uh, Sluggo because uh, mm. we're. Jero and I and um, Butterfly Boy were in the phone wait, wait, Who's Butterfly Boy? Uh, I don't know. He he phased out the next day from being a pledge. <laughs> I can't like remember. A coon. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, he... Um, so we were in the phone booth oh, doing, the, doing the smoke out. And uh, Sluggo was uh, managing us and... Uh, I think Great. Scott came and distracted <laughs> Sluggo. And um, one time he went there and he looked and, and we were, uh, two people were gone and I was wedged up in the top of the roof. So he couldn't figure out where we went even though the desk in front of the door had not moved. And I think it was, I think it was me that, uh, that uh, managed uh, Sluggo that night to, so he wouldn't die. <laughs> I've still never had a joint. <laughs> I'm probably well, having been in this whole thing here. Never, never smoked. Not even took it to my lips like Clinton. So <laughs> <laughs> when you guys uh, kept trying to get me drugged by giving me uh, cookies and shit like that, man, that were late. <laughs> That's because you were brought up in Monterey Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight laced. So, hey, speaking of Little Sister, does anybody remember the version that Neely sang? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Now, this is going to his mom. That's <laughs> <laughs> not. Right. <laughs> Is that is that the good ship, Mabel? Uh, <laughs> I've met Georgine. I love Georgine. Do you remember the limericks on the buses to the to the football oh, games? Sure. Oh yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Very great. Yeah. <laughs> that, hey, I want to hear from the younger Delts if we can. Um, uh, Tim or Rick. Well, this is Mark. I'll go ahead and start. So I knew Scott initially as being the adult in the room. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, you all laugh because you know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Scott was actually uh, an amazing individual, as you all know. We just knew him from a little slightly different perspective. And uh, he did everything he could. Uh, to try and keep us out of trouble. And he ran interference with us with national and uh, we kind of put him to task. Yes. But uh, we stayed in contact for years after. And Rick, who's on this call, kind of uh, rallied the troops and we kind of centered around the Long Beach Grand Prix as kind of like our annual reunion. And Scott would show up to that Long Beach Grand Prix. And I was reluctant at first, but I went and on my first one, we spent most of our time in the art house. I think it was called something else at the time, but it was a bar. We saw, we were there for about eight hours. We saw about 20 minutes of racing. <laughs> and uh, I lived in Long Beach at the time. And so we all came back to my place. And uh, I guess somebody in the group brought some sugar donuts. And, uh, and uh, so I had a Dalmatian puppy at the time and he came out and he was greeting everybody. and He was pretty hyper and somebody threw a sugar donut out on the front yard. And uh, so the dog, you know, being a dog went right at it. And Scott, being Scott, went right at it too. And they, were, they were on the ground, you know, snout to donut fighting over that darn thing <laughs> who won oh scott <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah he, that Ar arlene's remember the runs to arlene's donut oh yeah uh, donuts, oh, donuts, donuts, donuts and chili dogs but fistas 
when you brought up the notes. comet, I was going to say, God, the number of times that I got in that car with him to make an Arlene's run. Uh, cinnamon uh, rolls at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when they were fresh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ behind the camera making them for us. Oh. Listening to the credibility gap. <laughs> they must not have. They must not have had fat burger at the time. <laughs> no. And if it wasn't that, it was Olympic burger. <laughs> no, yeah. you would have to drive Lake. to the original Tommy's, Tommy's. in yeah. Silver Lake. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. That's a forty-minute yeah. drive. Neely's so burger. Neely's burger place was Bill's hot spot. Well, well that's hot. true. But oh, yes. You guys did didn't have ever... ships, did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the oldest waitresses do... in the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody do Sympathy for the Devil better? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Uh, no yeah. Hey, did anybody <laughs> look up Warm Leatherette? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the name of the... Robert Palmer, Addicted to Love. <laughs> oh, God. Now I... Right in the corner of um, Haley and uh, they, it, they had two separate wings and it's now that it's it's just, oh, that's not okay people go on and off so I don't know, they're, yeah, like Paul just came back he was going for a bit I can't find anything on that no don't let him I'll, I'll share a funny story I'm kind of the oldest out of the new bunch I met Scott probably before anybody when I was I actually rushed the Dell house because they said they were going to they were going to teach us how to hang glide and I'd never seen that in a rush before so <laughs> I, I was thinking, you know that's pretty good that's that's different and we ended up just partying on the beach and it was, it was a lot of fun but, but I actually was president of the Dell house and it wasn't most of these guys were on here but you know i the i thought oh this is a great honor you know i was a sophomore and this is this is really something what i didn't know is that the reason why they made me president is because i had to go before the inter fraternity council because we were on like double secret probation. <laughs> we, had, we had given, I guess, booze out before their time. And I remember talking to Scott and I said, you know, what the hell am I going to do? I, you know, and he goes, you know, Animal House? And I said, yeah. He goes, I want you to watch that. And he goes, and then do, do everything completely different. <laughs> and uh, I went there and we got off of probation. He goes, you must have done okay. And I said, well, <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> because, uh, but they weren't going to really, they just wanted to bust us up a little bit. But, you know, Scott was like a big brother to me and probably to most of these younger guys here. Um, I didn't even know what a chapter advisor was. I thought he was part of the fraternity when I first came here. <laughs> he was uh, the youngest guy I had ever met. You know, his, I, I was one of the people and Rick and, and most of these guys that are on this Zoom meeting, um, we all went to the Grand Prix and I'm listening to you. He didn't change one step. He would get the waitresses going in these bars. He would get everybody going. And, yeah. you know, I, being a good little brother i tried to, <laughs> i got in a lot of trouble with scott sometimes and uh, he'd be mad at me i i think i bought a jacuzzi with seth siegel one time yeah and seth said don't worry about it it's all paid for it i scott looks at me like an older brother and says bakeman what did you do and i said he's paid for the whole thing and we're as we're carrying it up the side of the uh Delt house, you know, it's a big, huge, and we're rolling <laughs> up on the side of the Delt house. But 
you know, he was, uh, uh, it was amazing. He could transcend age limits. He could transcend, he could be, you know, with us. He could be with you guys. It was just pure Scott. Yeah. You know, we, we, and we always looked forward to him being there. He, like you, he was the life of the party. He was. Yeah. He, he was amazing. If Scott wasn't there, the party really didn't get started. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. So probably I mean, the I, only one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, he's probably the only person I know that didn't get pissed off during Hell Week. I mean, he just it was always kept a kept a positive attitude and the rest of us are trying to figure out why the hell we're in the closet, you know, smoking cigars or something. He <laughs> just was a, a happy person, you know, a very, very smart, very talented, excellent lawyer, but a good person to be around. You know, I'll tell you, if anybody got out of hand at Hell Week, he was always the one to mellow out people. You know, he'd always come there and make sure people were having fun. Because, you know, guys get out of hand once in a while on that. Yeah, really like yeah. to stick it to the, yeah. to the pledges. But yeah. Scott was always there to kind of moderate things, you know. And that's, I think that was his greatest gift was not telling us what to do, but moderating us, you know. And he'd sit there and he'd look at me once in a while. He goes, you really think that's best? And I'd tell him, <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, we do it anyway. But <laughs> speaking I, of help, uh, I think that it was Scott that taught me um, how's your cow. Uh, she walks, she fought, she walks, she talks, she's full of chalk. The lactic fluid extracted from the female with the bovine species is highly prolific in the nth degree. Remember that one? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and Tim, speak and Mark, speaking of which, that's what survived after all these years. Check them wow. out. Gosh. Oh, wow. That's the Delt gavel that you guys used when you were president. Wow. It, it survived, baby. Wow. <laughs> oh, my second wife out in. Oh, is it started already? Mark, you're muted. What? Can you hear me? I am muted. Sorry, we want to welcome Thank those of you who are, next, uh, are joining us. Um, we'll be showing a video just shortly. The uh, Delts are just finishing up what's been a great little collection of memories. So guys, continue on and uh, we'll wait for people to arrive. So I was gonna, I was gonna tell you, um, if you chair on the picture, and, uh, oh, that's right. Wait, that's right. Hello, hello. And um, well, I'm like, the, just on it. Now we're kind of opening up to everybody else. Hey, Park. Yes. How is your mom? How's your mom doing? Oh, she's doing fine. I just thought it'd be, uh, I'll, I'll kind of represent her on this, but she's, she's doing well and, and knows about this call and is very, very uh, grateful for everybody for, for participating. Uh, well, I, I had the, uh, I had the opportunity. Oh, I went to those with you. If I have one more story about Haley, I just thought of that. If you guys have time. We can have everybody mute except John Patton. Yeah, okay. Yep. How do you so, do that? What, one of the things I, I touched on is that Scott was really, a, a really, not only funny and, and warm person, but he was really kind. Um, and I, I just, I just remembered this. One year, he and I went down to the the Crosby. It was called the Crosby back then. It's now going on this week, I think, the at and Yeah, um, it is. It was at the golf tournament at Pebble Beach. And he he called me and said, would you like to go with, and we'll, we'll just go for the day. And I said, yeah, I'd love to go, but I, I got to bring my daughter because I can't remember what it was, but my daughter, Anna, was like three or four years old. And he says, well, bring her. So we went down and we walked around the course with her and he put her on his shoulders and stuff and walked her around. He was so, so good to her. And we had a wonderful day. And I, and I 
I'll never, you know, I'll never. somehow I had forgotten that. I had just brought it back. Which pretty, pretty special, good. John. Yeah. Hey, John, my, my kids called him Uncle Dog. <laughs> no. I don't know Dog. why, but they loved him. Yeah, he was, he's the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was good to him. Yeah, the, the other thing I remember about Scott is, it, it, you know, it didn't matter when you ran into him. He was always the same. He always was so happy to see you and he made you feel like you'd just seen him the day before yesterday. He, he, he just never changed. He was just a great friend, yeah. And do we have other Dump stories. As I, uh, I've got to figure something out here with screen share. I'm getting ready to show this video, so if you can bear. Yeah, with I have, me a I second. have one more. I have one more, Mark. Um, I knew Scott as my alumni advisor, and then when he left and went back up north, I took over for I don't know seven years. But we managed to stay friends. And at some point, when I had small children, we did the little loop through California so the kids can see, you know, the sea of the mission that they did the report on and all that. And so we stopped up in San Francisco and I managed to finagle a day where we could go meet Scott. My kids had never met him. And so we went to his house in Redwood City and we were talking about, oh, we're going to go to this really neat campground and it's called Big Trees up in Calaveras. And I said, oh my God, I got a cabin up there. Why don't you just go up to the cabin? I'll come with you. And so we probably did that for three or four summers in a row after that, where we meet Scott up there. And I tell you, there's nobody on God's green earth that can trash a kitchen cooking like Scott. He's just, I always had to do the dishes when he cooked. And it was like, oh my God, it was like every single thing in the, in the house got used. But he introduced my kids to Mr. Bean and took us down to Murphy's and to all the restaurants. And we still go up there. I mean, we go up there, obviously not this year, but we still go up there and see that whole area and go to concerts and stuff. And it was all because Scott just said, hey, I'll go up there with you. I'll meet you up there. Let's go. And he just dropped everything that summer and went up there for a week with us and showed us the sites and everything. And even the kids, Uncle Scott to the kids. So he's been a part of my family the whole time, besides the Grand Prix and all the crazy stuff we did in the houses and he used to chase Tim and I around. We were up on the third floor and he'd come up, you know, come up from work and whip out his insulin needle. And we both hated needles, you know, making us look and we were like screaming like little girls for him to get away. <laughs> so that's it. Um, I tell you what, I'm having difficulties queuing up this video because I changed my operating system and so Zoom is not letting me share the screen the way I thought. So I'm wondering if we can go ahead and do a candle lighting. I believe. Hi there, guys. How are you? <laughs> so Lockie does not know about mute. Lockie, you should mute. <laughs> I had it worked out to be able to play this and then play the video and then do the candle, but let me change the view now to, to the gallery. Hey, hey Mark. Mark, this is yeah. Jeff. I'm Scott's cousin. Is that him? Or yes. How do you get the sound? You guys are, so listen, I just wanted to say something about Scott too. We had huh. various times with him at Big Trees. We loved him. Great guy. He lived with our family for a while. We'll miss him greatly. It's so awesome to see everybody on this uh, Zoom. Park, good to see you. I'm waving at you, Park. Um, but I mean, he was an incredible guy. My kids loved him. They called him Cousin. So, yeah, thank you all for participating. It's awesome. I wish Georgine and my mom could be on the call too, but they would not know how to mute. I guarantee you. <laughs> well, we're recording this, so they'll be able to look at this. And so now, if we can 
take your candles and uh, lighters or matches um, and for a brief moment, light them. I have to be careful to not light my house on fire. <laughs> yes, we've had enough of that in California. All right. So if you could hold the, your candle up. And kind of angle it so we can see. And once everybody is in position, a brief moment of silence. And this is for Scott Neely. You lit up our lives and we will never forget you. You're here. You're Scott. Yeah. And but we Scott will be Scott. 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 Here's a toast to him. Where, he wherever goes. he is, he is with us. Me. Scott. Scott. <clears throat> Scott. 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 Cheers. Scott. Scott. Cheers. Love you, Scott. I'm pretty you, sure Scott. he's listening to ZZ Scott, Scott really loud. <laughs> Full blast. Jesus. Sharp dressed man. Hey, Mark. It's, it's yeah. Mark. I just want to make Scott. a couple of comments if I can. Yes. So um, I'm going to do my best to um, conduct this if I need to. But let's have everybody mute. And if you feel like speaking, unmute yourself and speak. But remember, we can't all be speaking at the same time. So someone wanted to speak, go ahead. That's, uh, that's Park. Hey, Park. Um, I, I, there are three boys in our family. Scott was the oldest, I'm in the middle, and Stephen is the youngest. He's, uh, he will join if he can. Uh, but I wanna thank you, Mark and Karen for setting this up. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, way to recognize somebody who uh, I've heard the comments already stated that that meant so much to a lot of us and it's interesting to see I see Hawk there I see names that Scott always talked about from the Delt house I see my cousins and my family and friends that we knew from Scott loved going to Oceanside the beach and and uh, and, and every year since 1960 we went there and that was a big tradition for him he, he was very much into traditions and and enjoying life uh, I'm kind of the stick in the mud one. The younger brother Stevens, a little, little more wild. But, but all that said, uh, when I kind of look back on all the, the the comments that people have made, he really brought a lot of happiness to people and was was never selfish about it. And uh, I know he's he's going to take that with him to heaven, and so he's probably sharing it uh, up there as well. But uh, I wanted to thank um, on behalf of my mother, who's 94 and will turn 95 on in April, and uh, I will share all this with her. Uh, how much love and affection and kindness and outpouring of thought have, has come uh, as a result of Scott. So, so thank you all. It's lovely to see you all. And Mark, this is a, this is a great mechanism by which we can express our, our thoughts, condolences, and, and happiness about how much joy he brought to all of our lives. So I thank you all uh, very much. My best, Georgie. I'm supposed to mute. Uh, um, this is uh, Andrea Kunkel. Um, I worked with Scott at a few companies that he was at, and and I was listening to some of your comments prior to everybody really getting on board. And oh my God, now I know where he gets it from or where he started it. <laughs> um, he was just a wonderful guy. Turned out to be a fantastic friend always fun like you said cooked up the storm um had just the greatest personality and just a really fun guy to be around and you know i know him from his working days and how grumpy he could get <laughs> um but he always like you said made fun of himself about it he knew so it just i just miss him dearly oh okay okay Working days, 
what exactly were his working <laughs> days? <laughs> well, I actually worked with him. I'm I knew sorry. Him. No, I know he he made it fun to work uh, or made work fun. I don't know, but he I, I met him at his late later days at Ask, um, and then I actually worked with him at Phoenix Technologies and really got to know him there. And then I ended up working for him at Broad Vision, and then he retired. So it was, yeah, it was that was years ago. I know. I've been friends with him ever since. He's such a dear guy. He was always <laughs> concerned about my family and, you know, just a wonderful guy. No, I understand he's a very caring individual and everything else, but he must be a super lawyer because he hasn't worked a day since he was 20 fucking eight for crying out loud. I mean... He got in as a contract lawyer with all these startup biotech companies and sealed the deal for himself on the way out when they got bought up. The guy was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. He was a damn good lawyer. Hi, can people hear me? I'm, I'm Roger Whitney and uh, I am Scott's next door neighbor and uh, my partner and I, husband and I, have been neighbors with Scott for over 36 years. Uh, we moved in together here uh, in the neighborhood just as it opened and have been friends and neighbors ever since. And I would just like to say, coming from a totally different perspective, that from overworking on fences together and uh, French drains and landscaping projects and unbelievable number of joint projects in our neighborhood over 35, 36 years. Uh, one of my favorite memories is just about probably months ago when uh, Scott and Jim and I were trying to uh, figure out how to keep Timmy from coming through the fence from his yard into our yard and, um, you know, jostling with our cat and, and our little dog. And it was a really fun effort. Scott and I collaborated and we figured out how to put up a little bit of a new fence. And then we also, um, you know, we Scott had rigged up some chairs in his side so Timmy couldn't get through the chairs to get through the fence. Mm -hmm. And we had a good time figuring out what we were gonna do next to try to foil Timmy uh, in some of his exploits. But I will tell you that Scott and everything we ever did was always uh, the perfect neighbor, partner, friend. He went above and beyond to always do his share and the things that were kind of important to make sure everything went the way it should. And in the neighborhood at large, we're a very tight knit neighborhood up here in Redwood City. And he oftentimes brought his legal expertise into things going on in our community. And he was always willing to do that and to kind of help out and be sure we were on the straight and narrow where we should be in some of the things going on around us. But I particularly remember how he helped a lot of different people in the neighborhood. There might be somebody who was having a problem with this, that, or the other in their community. And Scott would always stand up front and center and speak up for them and go the extra mile to help them solve their problem from whatever perspective. He always did the right thing and was there to help. Um, I think my fondest memory, though, is always going to be Scott with his series of golden retrievers, whoever they were over the years. It was always Scott, his golden retriever right here. And even when his health failed in the last few years and he had a lot more trouble, he was always the same person. He was always positive. He was always smiling and doing the best he could despite some of the obstacles he faced. And um, I must tell you, I'm so glad to meet and see the names of people I heard him talk about over the years and see members of his family that I've heard him talk so positively about. And I can just tell you from afar and from a different perspective, you all meant so much to him. And his family and his friends were extremely important. And I'm just glad to get to see all this come together tonight because you were such an important part of Scott's life. And above all, on behalf of my husband, Jim, and me, and um, I, all of us here in Kentfield Commons, he was a great neighbor. Scott was always a great neighbor, a great friend, and really a great human being. And we're gonna miss him very much. We already do. And he certainly made a difference in his life was was one of those that will. I'm glad to be home, having a nice small drink. Uh, first one, nice and stiff. It's about 10 ounces of alcohol. <laughs> um, 
my brother Park and I are just eternally grateful, Mark Wright, to you and to the rest of you guys that are all here signed in to, memor to memorialize my brother Scott because I didn't realize how much I had of him until he's gone. So I encourage you all to call a brother, sister, mother, father tonight or tomorrow and tell them you love them. So for that, Lisa's going to read this poem. If you guys wouldn't mind, it's a little bit long, but I think you should hear it. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Neely. I'm glad to be part of the Neely family and to have known Scott. Anyway, so representing Georgine Neely at Scott's 50th anniversary. So she's not here, but she kind of is here. I've written poems for a number of friends and for a relative two or three, but this one's for someone and special, a member of the Neely family tree. I'm sure you Northern California is the East Bay. He was born May 9th, the exact date, about mid-morn. Crocker Highlands was the first school he did attend, started out with Doug Eggers his neighborhood friend. In 1960, with his family, he departed to Southern California. San Marino schools, he started. Chattic choir, Boy Scouts, and Eagle rank he earned. Tried a few sports, not his bag, he uh. soon learned. <laughs> Latin and Paul Schickel, the stage and Paul Klopper, Paracel and Scott's Mr. Snow, a real show stopper. Mm. Just a few of the things he found fun, along with serious studies. In 67, he's done. While in high school, he made some good pals. Dave Davidson, a fun guy. Bieber Glennie, a real neat gal. Ooh. Almost. <laughs> now it's off to college. UCLA's his selection. Delta Tau Delta, his fraternal connection. Here he met Hawk Lundstrom and Mark Wright. Delighted to say they're both here tonight. A trip to Europe in 69 for the 10 week sojourn. He earned every dime. Law school's next, his goal since a kid. Did quite well, graduated cum laude he did. His legal career he starts in LA and finally ended up in San Francisco's South Bay. There you have it. And it's just about time to end this story and finish this rhyme. However, I just want to add a serious note from both me and your dad. Lots of love to you. And we're here to say we're so proud of you in every way. Happy birthday. God's blessings to you on this big number 50. You're a terrific son. In short, you're just nifty. We love you, Scott. Love you, Scott. Spent many a time in Oceanside with Scott. I don't know if any of you guys know that. You're fraternity brothers, but I've known Scott since I was a little girl. And we we spent many a summer in Oceanside with the Neely family. And they're, they're my family. And Georgine and my dad grew up together. And, and the Neelys are our family. And... You know how hard I worked to get in a goddamn invitation to Oceanside that summer? He never invited me to Oceanside. <laughs> <laughs> That's because the house was so teeny tiny. We crammed about 20 people in a two-bedroom house with two bathrooms. And it was oh the goodness. time of my life. Did it was Georgine and Tom, they were gracious. The bozo will tell you this. I went to Neely's house for Thanksgiving probably two or three times. I, I, I love Georgine. Um, the last time I saw Scott, he would call. They talked every day to work Georgine through the jumbo puzzle, if you're familiar with that. Um, yeah, yeah. No, Georgine was a, was a wonderful, wonderful person. And Tom, too. Tom, Tom was the greatest, the, just the greatest. Talk about what a little woman and a huge man. <laughs> uh, at any rate, yes. yes. And Lacey Park for July 4th. Oh, yeah. Many a Lacey Park. 
But those Mark, I can make, if I can make one more comment, uh, Stephen mentioned that he'd gone up to Scott's house. One of, one of the most important things to accomplish in that he did, because Scott loved dogs. He had many dogs. And Timmy was a golden retriever. And Timmy has a new home. And that's thanks to Stephen and these nice and a lady named Nancy Gabriel who would walk the dog for Scott and they placed Timmy. And so Scott would be smiling even more so. So uh, uh, as, as uh, Roger uh, mentioned that they were neighbors and they kind of knew, knew about Scott, but Scott's love for dogs was uh, unsurpassed. And naming them after ZZ Top things was also very good. <laughs> So um, I want to thank Scott, Park, and Stephen for teaching me the value of barter. We used to go there every Thanksgiving uh, to be with the family. And one of the highlights of the whole thing was going to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And we'd go to Disneyland and you'd have tickets that, that went from A to <clears throat> E. And, and Scott, Park, and Stephen convinced me that if you were really good in school, you get A's. <laughs> and if you're really bad, you get F's or E's. So they made me trade all my E tickets to them for A tickets. <laughs> I will never forget that. And you guys, you guys owe me. That's Celia, hilarious. are you there? Celia Moore. I'm just uh, coming in to um, unmute myself. Oh, I'm, I'm Fran. Fran. I'm Fran and Lisa. There's I Celia and Fran. Uh, Hawk, I just want to tell you that we never waited for an invitation. Lisa and I just showed up in Oceanside one day. In fact, I think we, I think we displaced Steve and Lisa, who were staying with uh, Scott at the time. Uh, I do remember how happy he was there. It was, uh, it really was his happy place. Another happy place for him was the cabin up in Arnold. We called it a cabin. It was really a house. Uh, yeah. We were blessed to be the original co-owners with Scott uh, on that place in Arnold and, you know, planned it together and acquired it as a lot originally and uh, had a lot of great times with him up there. So uh, a lot of memories, hard to process all of this. I'm sure that's true for all of us, but um, we're going to miss him a lot. Hi, this is Chris, Scott's youngest cousin, and first of all, I want to thank Mark and the rest of the fraternity brothers for making this such a special gathering, and um, I want to say hi to Park and Stephen and Lisa, since I haven't had a chance to talk to you since we lost Scott, but um, there's so many memories I have of him. I mean, Thanksgivings in San Marino were priceless, um, but the thing about special one of the special things about Scott was he was 11, almost 12 years older than me, but he never treated me like I was the little kid. Um, he always made me feel included. And um, one of my fondest memories was he took me and my son, Casey, to his first concert, which just happened to be ZZ Top. Go figure. Um, and that that memory will stick with me forever. And we lost our son in October of 2020. And Scott video called me for about an hour. And it was, it was one of the more special moments that I had in that tough time. And <clears throat> My son also, just like Scott, and it, I think it runs in our blood, loved rock and roll, loved it to death. And it turns out that Scott passed away on what would have been my son's 30th birthday. So I know that they're up there rocking with Eddie Van Halen and whoever else is joining in and um, hug your family. And thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chris. Still oh, no. waiting to hear from Celia and Bill. Can I say one thing? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hi, um, I'm Paul Dumont. This is my wife, Gabrielle. 
You still yeah. it? Yeah. You still it? Hey, Paul. Hello. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hello, Bill. I'm Celia. Okay. And John and Jody. There's a lot of people on this this uh, call here that uh, that I know. I had the privilege. I'm going to try not to cry. Um, I, I moved. Scott was the very first one to move into Kettlefield Commons, and I was the very I was the second one. And within a year or two, we became best friends. Uh, we both got golden retrievers with, within a week of each other. I had Boomer. He had ZZ. Um, and they, they played together forever. Hello, Jody. Um, we went. To, we went. And there's Bill. We went to Giants. We went to Giant Spring training for for 10 years but with bill moore and 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 others and we went in um God, and then we had season tickets for the giants with with mark and others for 10 years and, and did that in, in the group that that scott controlled scott was also the best man in our way i went to spring training I once <laughs> i couldn't do it again a lot of people couldn't handle more than once but we did it for 10 years <laughs> Uh, and, our, and, our, and our daughters grew up knowing Uncle Scott. It's Uncle Scott. Uncle Scott. Um, I'm gonna miss him a lot. And I just, I love him. He's a best friend. There, I'm gonna say something other than about Scott is to Park and to Steve. I, I had the privilege of having dinner with your dad over at Scott's house. Your dad, mm -hmm. and Scott didn't really realize this about your father. I used to fly airplanes for a while, and your dad started to talk to me about his flying days in World War II. He was a bad ass. <laughs> he was, if for people out there, he was a dive bomber. Mm, those are the right. those are the pilots that won Midway. And Scott really didn't know about that. And he, your, your, your dad was a badass, and your brother's a great guy. Love you guys. Uh, I'm going to chime in once again real quick, just because I see someone on here I haven't seen in quite some time. When we moved to San Marino, the first family that we met lived about four doors up the street. <laughs> and my best friend was Tommy Wagner. And I don't see him on the screen here, but I see his brother, John. I wanted to say hello to him. And uh, uh, Steve. John's probably got a, a cool story or a quick note to say about Scott, but we celebrated every Christmas together with his family until everybody uh, moved away or our parents have passed away. John's, both his parents have passed away, but it, it was a wonderful, wonderful relationship. And I just wanted to give a quick note to say hi to John and if he could say something quick. Well, about can, can you hear me or am I on mute? You're good. Yeah, you can. Boy, uh, I'm, thanks for point, point, seeing me in the corner here. I've been saying silent because I've just been in awe of all, uh, all of Scott's friends. Uh, it's, it's amazing because I only know, I only know the Neelys from being four doors down and coming up at Christmas time all the time. And Steve would always make sure that I would have a greyhound uh, fully up with a lot of ice every single time we'd get, get you know, get together. John, it wasn't and ice; it was vodka. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right but, but you, you mentioned do i have a fond memory um, of course every one of those times together were such warm wonderful fun fun times that we always look forward to we actually look more forward to that than opening up the presents the day before um but but one fond memory i have that kind of includes all the brothers is I don't know how many people know it. Um, you probably all do. It sounds like you knew um, Scott so well. They all were incredibly talented with the uh, with music and singing, and they all could play instruments. And my fond memory is when all of a sudden S S Steve brought brought out the guitar. Park may have been on the piano, and and you, I forget it. I forget how it went, but you all were singing Lola together, and. <laughs> Every time I hear that song, I can't help but visualize you guys singing and just rocking out completely. And it was just, just the, I was in awe. I was in marvel of how talented all you guys were. Hey, John, don't forget the six-pack joke. <laughs> yeah. That's an inside story. Yeah, yeah no, uh, that, will, that will remain uh, our joke. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this is uh, Steve Wagner. John. Oh, Steve, you made it. Hey, Steve, oh, yeah, I've been here the whole time. I, I wanted to just add to what John was saying. Hi, Steve and Park. Uh, Park and I had a nice conversation last night. Um, you know, growing up on Sycamore Drive, uh, the Wagner family and the Neely family, we were, we were there from the time we were little kids. I, I could probably talk for hours of, of the experiences that we had with each other. Uh, Scott was older than me. I had the three younger brothers, uh, Tom, uh, John, and Justin. Uh, some of the memories I remember that, that are just, were just fun is going to the high, getting driven to the high school in, in Tom Neely's Model A Ford. Uh, so never had to walk to school because we could always get a ride with uh, with Scott in the Model A. Steve uh, learned to drive on the Model A. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, Tom Neely would take Park and I over to, to uh, Santa Anita uh, racetrack, uh, you know, to the parking lot when we were like 11, 12 years old and taught us how to drive a Model A Ford <laughs> with us standing on the clutch trying to press it in while we're holding on to the steering wheel. Um, but Scott was our was the was the big brother I didn't have and uh and we were involved with Boy Scouts together um you guys talked about Oceanside um uh, our family did go down and join everybody with Oceanside uh, a, a couple of times our family had a house uh, up the coast a little in San Clemente at the time uh somebody was mentioning about uh, Tom Neely being a Navy fighter pilot well so was our father and, and our father and Tom would get together and talk, talk their Navy stories and flying. Uh, they would talk to each other, but us kids never heard anything. You know, they wouldn't talk to us about it, um, which was kind of uh, interesting. Uh, Tom Neely uh, was, was our Troop 354 uh, Scoutmaster. Scott was uh, in, in the troop uh, as well uh, as all of us. Um, we uh, we had so you know so much fun with uh, with the Boy Scout part of it. Uh, Scott was was also involved in 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 the uh, theater department, the drama department at San Marino. So were all four of us uh, on our family um, with uh, Paul Klopper and and the crew there. Uh, and and I distinctly remember when there was a fundraising event back in the 90s to save the drama department. Scott was one of the people who performed the same uh, part he played uh, in, I believe it was Carousel, I think, uh, that he had done in high school and just stepped right up and performed, uh, which was quite amazing. And he also got credited with uh, coming the farthest from the farthest away. I guess he was in London, England at the time and, and uh, flew in from London. And John Cervanka, who was one of the MCs that day, made fun of Scott for flying all the way in and then joked that, well, he must have been a uh, uh, stewardess or something uh, <laughs> uh, but George, Georgine and my mom were were best friends uh, to to our to her very end my parents uh, are long gone um, like John mentioned there was all these Christmas get gatherings uh, of course pool parties and everything else like I said I could talk forever um, we will miss him absolutely Who else would like to speak? I still want I'm to see what Cecilia like and Bill. To say, uh, uh, I was uh, touched by uh, Chris Calder's story. And I don't know Chris, but uh, I know Scott. And I, the fact that he called and comforted you made me remember something you did for me. Uh, he's two years uh, younger than me, but I was having a hard time at UCLA. I was having financial problems. Uh, academic problems. I was out of school. I was drafted. And Scott was one of the people that encouraged me to hang in there. And this is the first time I've told the story to my brothers. They're there, but I am thankful. Thank you, Scott. I'm Christine Newman. Um, Scott's yeah. neighbor on the other side of mm -hmm. um, Jim and Roger on mm -hmm. one side and I am um, the neighbor on the other side. I just wanted to say that every time I saw Scott, he always had a smile on his face. I love that about him. And we would, you know, talk about our shared diabetes. And so as a nurse, I also um, was able to go with him when he had his surgery. Um, and so that was helpful. I wish I were there you know, a couple days ago. Um, 
to maybe be able to help. But one of the things we, um, we did share a little bit was uh, I knew he loved football. And so I would do whatever I could during football season to hang up signs saying, go USC. Uh, I know all of you guys. I know. I know you're all UCLA. Sorry. But anyway, it's a lot of fun because usually we beat them. That was right on. about the only time right Scott on. wasn't happy. So anyway, Mark, he was a lot are you going to delete her? You need her. <laughs> Mark Wright was a tight end for UCLA. You're in big trouble. So see, I know, My I'm fingers sure. going quick. <laughs> <laughs> This question is the better part of valor. <laughs> Let's hear it for University of Second Choice. <laughs> Do they play football at UCLA? That's apparent. Children. Yes. <laughs> and we study. Excuse me. Off the delts. <laughs> We right. have other people study for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was also very and very nice to meet Lisa and Stephen this past week. And also I met Park last year and I wish they lived up here. Anyway, they're great. Hey, I wanted to say a quick hello. Um, I'm uh, Steve Neely's daughter, Callie, um, Uncle Scott was always amazing. I love hearing these stories about him because it was another dimension of him that we didn't know. Um, we didn't meet Scott until um, we were, my sister and I were 12 and 13 or maybe 11 and 12. Um, and even with all the time that came that, you know, he didn't get to spend with us, it makes a lot more sense to me now that he was such a natural uncle when he was with us, um, hearing the stories of how he was with other people's children. Um, one of my like best memories of him is I turned 15 and my best friend Amy uh, turned 15 just after me and we wanted to take a flight all by ourselves because we could fly alone because we were 15. And uh, Steve called up his brother and said, hey, the girls want to take a trip. What do you think about, you know, it'd be kind of crazy, but what do you think about the girls coming up and visiting? And without hesitation, it was just done. Of course, like he came and picked us up and um, we, he took us around all over the city and uh, just was, it was the most wonderful and natural experience. He, uh, somebody else said it earlier when you saw him, it was like no time had gone by. Like he was just, he was just that guy. Tell so. him about the hot chocolate. Oh yeah. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he was the one who taught me how to make proper hot chocolate because we like spoiled babies had been making it in water with a packet of cocoa and you're he, welcome right right, right <laughs> taking the easy road and um he made his hot cocoa on the stove top with milk and it changed my world <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen anybody take that much time in into something as simple as hot chocolate and uh my other favorite thing was realizing on that trip that that um, when he cooked, he cooked for two, for him and for Zizi. <laughs> <laughs> and Zizi got a portion of whatever was for dinner that night, every night. So that, I just, oh, gosh. Well, Callie, my, my two sons used to call Scott Uncle Scott, and he had many uh, second generation kids call him Uncle Scott. You actually are a legit person who called him Uncle Scott. You, <laughs> you should get a badge or something. <laughs> oh, I always liked the uh, the Christmas gifts we would get from him too, because they were usually cooking related. We, his favorite, he would discover a new favorite yeah. thing, and that was the pan oh, that everybody got for Christmas. So yeah, I've still got that pan, by the way. <laughs> I think he had probably he probably had like 40 or 50 uh, nieces and nieces and nephews. So sorry, I know you were the first, <laughs> probably I'm legitimate, but I know there's one. Um, there's so many funny things to say about Scott and the memories. <laughs> I mean, things like, 
this one made anything to maybe only a couple of people, but Dr. Bucks. Yes. <laughs> John and Jody, Dr. Bucks. Um, <laughs> The damn like fake teeth he would wear at the, to our restaurant, at the restaurant, and the waiter would be so confused. Like we're all I can't, face. I can't laugh at this person because he's wearing, he has these awful teeth, but he's ordering food. <laughs> at the restaurant, and we were at the table trying not to wet our pants, and I was ordering like, souffle, <laughs> and um, then. Ultimately, we would bring the waiter in because he'd get a really big tip and he would then realize, oh my God, thank God, because that was the ugliest person I'd ever seen. <laughs> um, or when we, uh, Scran and Lisa, remember- See that? Were they like these? <laughs> about that like that? <laughs> Three God, right? Where are you? Conan started that whole damn thing. Where are you? <laughs> somewhere pro and then the okay we the span and lisa will remember the new year's eve at his cabin and you know it's five degrees outside but and we're having our own little you know private party but suddenly there's a knock on the door well we're in the middle of no fucking where pardon me and there's a knock on the door and we're like don't answer it well it was the neighbors from way up above who had come because they ran out of mixers they needed mixers <laughs> That's right. and we were like oh come on in whoever you are you might have a you might be murdering us but come in with your sharp knife we have seven up and we have um vodka and tonic what's, and what's that under your coat come in with our party and then so we were <laughs> at us because we that's not connectable as we got bored with our party and guess who had the opus one cabernet that they were serving at their party hi not us yeah, they had like the 400 hundred dollar bottle of wine and we were like oh hi we could stay here the rest of the night that's fine and then there was the, um, we were at the, the cabin and we decided to all go to dinner. Well, it was Bill and, and Scott and I, and we're like, let's go down to the club for dinner. Okay. We go down to the club. Yeah, club. Somebody Sequoia had, Woods in, Celia. Somebody brought a new pen. You brought a new pen, so you have to test it <laughs> out right. on the table cloth. <laughs> signature with the new pen the tablecloth and it's a linen tablecloth can a big pen Scott who cares so we got the tablecloth at the end of the night because <laughs> we felt bad because we ruined the tablecloth there was no alcohol and then yeah. there was the night that Goody we went to see Sam uh, uh, Sinatra a bunch of us oh, no, and Joey. Goody yeah. was driving yeah. uh, home I think and I think we were probably blasting Tom Petty free falling. It was and 100%. It was, I think Goody was driving on the, curb. the median. <laughs> but we made totally. But my mom, we my home and, and I'm sorry to say that was the night that Jody cut her hand open and probably still has a scar, but. Still numb. Right here. Still numb. That's yeah. <laughs> just yeah. the tip of the iceberg of stuff. <laughs> and then, you know how stubborn he was. Remember how he had an argument with the lady behind us? <laughs> yes. He got into a fight with a lady sitting behind us. <laughs> and then the night that, it was the principal, John. It was a, and yeah. then there was the really fun night at dinner, um, which was a restaurant in San Carlos we used to go to all the time. And Bill and, and Paul Joe's. And Scott and I were sitting there, and all of a sudden, for some reason, we started singing from All in the Family <laughs> the theme song. And the poor people behind us were like, Why are they singing that song at the top of their lungs? And they, thank God they had us in the corner. So, boy, did I, boy, did I jam? And oh my God, it was awful. But anyway, it was just sort of, you know, every week.
weekend singing songs and having dinner and Scott's culinary absolute peace and um, just adventurism. Um, and I can't even believe he's actually gone. He's hey, not. Mark, one thing I was hoping to see, but I didn't in the, the video of Scott's 50th birthday party is I believe Montrose came on and my brother, Stephen and Scott, the four of us got up there and shredded rock candy. So if you have that on film somewhere, I'd love to love to get a cut of that one. That was that sums up Scott right there. I mean, that's sure just a blast. That you're shredded is the right way to put it, Chris. <laughs> I, mean, I think butchered might be another word you could use. Uh, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and you guys are, you're missing a little bit of time here. Time when, Scott, when Scott came to his senses and moved from Southern California to Northern California and went to law school at USF. He had nowhere to live, so he, he ended up in our house. And he was there for quite a while. And I'm Chris and I, Chris is probably 12, I was about 15. And it was during the end of the Vietnam War Nixon was president, and of course, Scott is not political, and my father was not either. My father was a staunch Republican, and, and Scott was a, you know, we all know Scott. So our dinner conversations were unbelievable. That's how I got introduced to politics, was listening to my father and Scott over dinner. I was trying to hide the silverware. I thought somebody was gonna die. <laughs> It always ended. It always ended up with a cocktail <laughs> and we were friends. Yeah. Always, always. Scott was passionate about whatever he got involved with. Mm -hmm. And in 1974, mm -hmm. there was a resurgence in the interest in wrestling. Mm -hmm. There was a guy <laughs> named Dave Pound. Not wrestling, but um, um, uh, roller derby. Oh, God. And there was a, guy, a, a skater named Dave Pound who was the designated bad guy. And they were skating in sports arena, and the place sold out. And we decided to go to the sports arena and see if we could bug sport, uh, Dave Pound. And I was trying to figure out how we could break in by climbing over the fence. And of course. Hanging on to poles. And I actually got halfway in. But I was explaining this plan to Scott when suddenly Dave Pound walked by with a whole bunch of people following him on his way into the sports arena. And I'll never forget, he was listening to me and listening to me. And then he saw Dave Pound and he sprinted over there and just started yelling in his face, Dave Pound, you fucking asshole. You <laughs> just for 20 seconds, just screamed at him until Dave Pound uh, went into the locker room. And then he came back and goes, OK, and what were you saying? And he just picked it back up. But he just he got totally into we got to go get Dave Pound. And um, once again, there was probably a little alcohol involved. <laughs> Who else has stories before we begin to wrap things up here? John, good enough. I haven't heard anything from you about your trip to Kauai. Did you and Scott? Uh, I just, I just look, I, I just looked at Jody, and oh, yeah. all you guys are, all you guys are sharing these great stories. And I, I came in obviously after his UCLA days. I moved in with a roommate that introduced me into this band of of demons. There was <laughs> Scott and Paul Duma and Cronin and Celia and Doug Klein and Kathy. You know. It was, you know, so I got this this introduction to this cast of characters. It was like, like a circus. So uh, there's so many stories that that darn cabin just about killed me. 
literally, li- literally, you know, literally, I almost, want, I almost went up in San Quentin because of that cabin. <laughs> um, we went to Kauai with them. We went sailing. Uh, we went sailing one time and, and there was some alcohol involved. And Scott would say stuff that would just be the catalyst to so much humor. We were in the backside of some island on the bay and I go, it's a beautiful day. And he goes, it looks like a monkey jungle. It's like this beautiful green forest. And we, we go from there to Tiburon and there's the Duke basketball game as Scott and Julie are in the bar. Scott wanted some tartar sauce for his crab cake. And he comes back with a bowl of tartar sauce from that. He, you know, it's just like everything he did was like, yes, yes. We're on, the bo- we're, we're, we're on the boat later that night and he rolls out of bed and he, we hear this clunk on the floor and Scott and, you know, uh, the Kauai thing. I can't tell that story, Steve. Um, give it a little wiggle, John. Yeah, give it a little wiggle. I actually, I told that story to Steven and Lisa and we opened this album from his birthday party and Jody had wrote in the book, give it a little wiggle. And it's the story from when we went to Kauai and uh, for 21 days with Scott in Kauai. We don't need to say anymore. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> man, I, I, yeah. and then I worked, I worked in Menlo Park, you know, up the street from this little restaurant and Scott and I would meet there and have lunches and eat way too much. All the bad stuff that he should, he and I both shouldn't be eating. You know, the guy, the gal would bring a big old huge basket of French bread, and we'd have all this stuff. And the wonderful restaurant owner, and we, you know, Scott and I would have lunches and just listening to him. You know, the guy was, uh, the guy was, the guy was sharp, and uh, I learned a lot from him. And it's really sad. And uh, Park, you've been, you know. A pleasure to get to know you a little bit better and all the other people here on the screen. Mark Wright, I've heard, you know, I know your name, something fierce. I want to know which guy went to law school with him that was the district attorney for El Dorado County. <laughs> Nobody? Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Nobody willing to fess up to it. It's classic, you know. Scott it, always pulled a it, yeah, Scott could always pull some trick out of his pocket. And John. John, you have to explain why you want to know that. I was with Scott at that clubhouse that Celia was talking about at that cabin. And Scott and I are there. We were, I think there was just a couple of us, maybe three or four. And where's Jody? Was you and me and my our you, Jody was up at the house with our <laughs> with our new, our newborn child. And Scott and I decided to go down to the Sequoia Woods Inn, which is the, the restaurant bar connected to the golf course. And Scott and I go down there and we start drinking at the bar and I start doing some bar tricks, like lighting stuff on fire. And, and uh, Scott, you know, diabetic, we walk out of the place and he goes down um, near the curb. And, um, all the emergency guys come and Scott gets taken away in an ambulance. And I get taken away in another car with some lights on top. <laughs> And uh, because I Scott. because I was protecting Scott and I was interfering with a fireman, <laughs> and Scott knew some guy through law school who basically took the whatever and just shoved it over back of his desk and got me out of trouble. And Scott, that is Calaveras County, not Thank Colorado you. County. So, <laughs> which one of you guys is the DA you're looking for? Is in Calaveras County. John with the thank you. Yeah. So yeah, he. Um, I think that I think whoever it was owed Scott some money for a Volvo in in, in law school. Or something. But you know, I um, man, you know, there's people that you get around in your life, and I, man, I I miss him. I miss him already. And uh, I called him. He was on my short list. And I called him over the holidays because my parents passed away at Christmas. And I called him. I kept talking about getting him up here and and, because we moved. And I so wanted him to come up for a visit. And uh, anyway, I think, uh, Steve, your comment is quite good that we need to, you know, stay close to our friends and family. It's really hard. 
Yeah, it's been tough this year to reach out to anybody, and that's been the frustration I know I have faced with Scott over the last year is we just can't um, get together even if we're close to each other. And, and then suddenly something like this happens, and it reminds you to don't take anything for granted. Did anybody drive with him? Anybody, anybody get in the car with that guy? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, my God. God. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh I've got God. a really quick one. Like, swearing at people. Jump. Get that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I, that my was wife up. I, no. No. Sometimes Lisa and I were up there. Lisa and I, I were up there several years ago, and we had a half a day to kill before our flight. So I said, Hey, Scott, I'm a surfer. Will you take me out to this surf spot called Mavericks? which is nope. maybe a half hour from his house. So we're driving out there and believe me, we have like six hours to kill. He gets behind the first car that's not doing 80. Motherfucker, God damn it, move on. <laughs> oh my God, it was, and Lisa was like looking at me like- I go, dude, that's not good for you. That's not good for you. God damn, use your blinker. <laughs> I actually, he came in a dream to me that the other night and he was doing that. He was driving down some street yelling at people about not driving fast enough. Like his oh own. my God. <laughs> oh, hey, Duma. You remember the uh, do doggy, doggy yes. pathologist? Yeah, okay. oh, no, 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 no. If for a lot of you, if, if you don't know his nickname around a, lot, a group of yeah. friends of ours was right? C.P. Neely. And we, uh, um, Doug, Doug and I and, and others had gone um, water skiing with Scott. Uh, maybe, it was just, it, maybe it was just Scott and I. And any, anyway, we had gone up to, I think, Lake Shasta or something like that. And Let's go back. It was just he and I in the car. And we pull over to get, get gas. Oh, and of course, our dogs are there. And ZZ, mm -hmm. as, as soon as we filled up with gas, ZZ, goes into the into the driver's seat and Scott says this is not going to happen and he's pushing back ZZ pushing him back pushing him back all of a sudden oh my god what is that stink I, I don't know what's going on and Scott turns to me and he holds up his hand he says if you tell anyone Duma I'll kill you <laughs> and there is shit all over his middle finger it's <laughs> so, as he's pushing as he's pushing ZZ his middle finger went right up his ass <laughs> and I didn't tell anybody, but the next day there's a party over at Scott's house and everyone is calling him C.P. Neely. What? And he goes, canine proctologist <laughs> Neely. <laughs> That's C.P. Neely. I think everyone knows now. Boy. Yeah, now we yeah. all know. He became very intimate with, he, he and ZZ were very, <laughs> very close. <laughs> I, think, I think that took their relationship to a new level. <laughs> So that story he told at the uh, 50th uh, uh, bash was yeah. uh, at uh, in Yes. yes. I, that's the only other time I've ever told the story. <laughs> the only other time. Uh -huh. Sure, uh -huh. sure. Well, <laughs> maybe my friends. Herb, I think uh, Cronin wanted to say something. Is he there? He was on the chat. Are you ready, Cronin? Cronin. Where's Crow? Oh, you're on mute. We can see you. Come on, Cronin. You're on mute. Take your take your thingy out of your ear. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and the earpiece. No, we don't know sign language. There he is. Come on, Cronin. Come on, uh, Come on, Joe. You screwed up. What? Oh. Because it doesn't say he's muted. I love you. It's from the chat. He speaks. First, second word sounds like. Oh, my God. You're so old. It's yeah. like, it's oh. like we don't yeah, we don't. Right. I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It may be in your controls, in your audio controls. Yeah. Yeah. 
Go back in, Carlin. Your beautiful technician will fix it. She's up there. She's doing it. She's fixing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that must be funny, Carlin. We lost him. That's funny. <laughs> Dial in. Forget the video. Go down to your audio settings. Oh, it says connecting. It's a landline. No wonder. Yeah. You're, what are you, in Napa? Too much wine. <laughs> Never has the world waited with such anticipation. <laughs> We're waiting. This is going to be good, people. Yeah, I was going to say, Crowden, this better be A material. This is going to be <laughs> epic. epic. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 This better be oh. a good story. Yes. Man. Hey. Your technician gets all the credit. So, so John, re remember the Frank Sinatra concert? Yes. Remember when we we walked in? I guess one of the people behind us said, "Can you kind of be quiet?" Yes. And Scott said, "Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll be quiet." Some to that effect, right? Yeah. No, that's what we we're talking yeah. about. He got into a full-on beef with some lady behind us about being quiet. And we're singing yes. old Monter old Monterey. Yes. That was, that was at the Circle Star. This is the Circle Star Theater, you guys, in Redwood City is an old theater. It's like right before it closed. We took my mom, my I bought or my mom gave me this Delta Oldsmobile Delta 88 two-door convertible. We all piled into it, went down to saw the concert, and got very enthusiastic and drank too much and but we drove the thing back with two two wheels up on this grass island and two wheels on the fast lane going down this boulevard back to our house. And that's when Jody went through our plate glass coffee table and laced her thumb open. Oh, later. <laughs> here, she's leaning out of the picture. Get in here. <laughs> Tom was yeah, I, you know, we miss him. He was, he was uh, the life of the party. He was... I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at my other screen. There's a picture of him, and uh, I he was funny, uh, hilarious, uh, just I would, somebody you would, you you want to be a friend of. And I'm I'm, I'm very blessed to have um, you know a lot of my life you know shared with Scott. Um, he was, and I'm sure we all feel that because we're all, all part of this event tonight, and it just. Uh, it's sad, you know, um, but it's just, if we could just in situations like this, when, when people, nobody beats the Grim Reaper, um, let's just all remember the good things and the wonderful things that Scott brought to our lives. We're, we're fortunate, lucky. And um, I'm, that's what I'm going to remember. And when I think about him, I mean, here, we all know this. Let me, as I stop here, um, let me, let me do something. I, I think I can work my phone. So hold on before I get any help. Uh, let's, see here. Funny as hell. let's see here. Well, okay. Please wait. The silence. Okay, here we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. This was this was his favorite song, wasn't it? Oh God, yeah. Well, everything's easy to know. Okay, everybody start bobbing their head. Can this just start bobbing your head? <laughs> you guys are the bottom right. You're not bobbing your head. I just said our wedding just in, in, in honor of Scott. I love you, Scott. Peace. He, he, those, that ZZ Top was like, they were like gods to him. I remember we went to a concert up at Montalvo Winery up in Saratoga. It was very, very small. And Scott, you know, got in there and he's got a camera and he's, and they said, so, you know, no cameras allowed. And Scott is clicking off pictures. And finally this, you know, the, the guy's looking at him, the bouncer's looking at him. Finally, the guy comes over and goes, excuse me, sir. I think that's enough photos. And Scott just got, the guy just loved, you know, Billy Gibbons and Dusty and, you know, the whole thing. They, ZZ, so we went to a couple of ZZ Top concerts with him. It wasn't long before the air guitar would come out. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a broom or anything that he could get his hands on. Light a light post. 
<laughs> no, but we finally bought him a bunch of air guitars. Yes, Cat's yep. leg. Yep. Up on his coffee table. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. Well, we and found this T-shirt and amongst his things. It's pretty appropriate. I tried to hold it up if you guys can see it. It's all his golden retrievers. Yeah. Yay! Oh, Thank you. Shit. That is so sweet. Oh. All I got to say is, how, 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 how. <laughs> Give it a wiggle. Mark, Mark, I'm going to go. I just want you to know we've all, we've all touched the sun. And it's been amazing throughout the generations. I mean, here I am, 10... 12 years younger than him. And what you're saying is the same thing that, that I knew Scott for. Being in the bar in the uh, Long Beach Grand Prix, he was, he was golden. It was so much fun. You don't find people like that that bring out the fun. Yeah. Well, Tim, Thank you. thanks for joining yeah. us. And thanks for bringing all the uh, delts of your age on uh, to help us celebrate Scott's life and giving us that perspective. So, Tim, are you going to You know, we loved him. A handshake? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And we probably need to bring things to a close generally. Uh, anybody got last comments here? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say something. Um, I'm, I'm Jill Burgess, Jill Jernigan Burgess from the Oceanside crew. Hi, Jill. Hey, probably one of the youngest. Steve and I were the youngest of all these Good guys. Night. And Scott was the fearless leader that taught us a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I was just, he made it a commitment to get down here every year. And we always made it a commitment to be here when he was here, whenever it was, because Scott was just the, loved, the, Oceanside. loved Oceanside and we loved having him here. And um, so I just, you know, he, I was so excited. He was supposed to be here in April and then he canceled due to COVID and now this, but um, just really, appreciated the way that he treated me as the little one on the beach and always protected me from the bullies <laughs> and um, just what that whole July and August with the whole crew from San Marino and Pasadena being down here young swimming together surfing sneaking into the movie theater just good times and Scott always seemed to be at the helm of it. And Mike McKee is here with mm. us who grew up with Go S Mike! Yes. Hi, Mike. Hi Mike. Hi Mike. <laughs> what was, what was it? What was it? Was it secondary oh, school? What was the USC the new acronym? So Billy and Jill and choice. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Jill and Mike, love to see what? you guys. It's Lockie. I'm the youngest of all of you guys. You Hello, the Lockie. I'm the youngest uh -huh. of all of you guys from Oceanside. Yeah. Love every minute of all of our families. We're all family. And I love sneaking in at the uh, drive-in. Yeah. Yes. You bet. Yeah. And Scott was and the, the back leader. roads. The back roads, yeah. I love the back roads. And Jilly, you look the same. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I'd like to say something. I'm, I'm Casey. I'm Jill's older brother. Lockheed, don't say anything because I don't look the same. So. <laughs> I love it, Casey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't recognize me if you hadn't said my name. But I just want to say, Scott, yeah, it was when the Neelys came down, the Todds came down, the Galnettis and the Keys. It made <laughs> the every year the summer. And, you know, think about Scott. He just sit there as he got older, didn't move around quite like he used to, uh, to say the least, but he would sit out there in those beach chairs and just stare at the ocean and look like the most contented, happiest guy in the world. And, we made and the one thing I loved about Scott, I remember his laugh. 
it was just so classic and he was hilarious. Yeah, we're, we're going to miss him. I, you can't come to Oceanside without thinking about him. Oh, totally. You know, I got to say, of all of the things that there are to miss about Scott, I think the one that I'm going to miss most is his voice and his laugh, like you were saying. Um, he would sing at Christmas time, but he would always do it like it was a joke, but it was gorgeous. Like he just had this wonderful, rich voice, and even just his speaking voice. Like there's never been one like it. And I can recognize it from 10 miles away. It's, it's I'll always remember that. That's part of the reason why I've been calling his home number and his mobile number. You can hear his voice that way. Hey. And I have to say on the video that you captured his, yeah, baby. <laughs> that was just classic Scott, you know? <laughs> You've reached 650 366 7076. There you go. There you go. This is Oceanside, also here. Scott. The, the McKees. Park, do you remember Papa Umau Mau? Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> he would come in singing that. It would just. Oh, yeah. He was always on there. stage. <laughs> yes, he was so yes. depressed a couple of years ago because he said he couldn't come and he was 62nd year for coming to Oceanside because he stayed at our house for five or six, seven years. And uh, we always just enjoyed him coming down. We'd never miss it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> and Best he brought his dog a couple of times. <laughs> Best memories ever, ever, ever are the, is Oceanside with the Neelys, Scott Park, Stephen, Georgine, Tom, and Best Memories Ever, Zook, Lolly, <laughs> and maybe oh, yeah. my, my, maybe my one brother who's on here tonight too. <laughs> Amen to that. All right, folks. Well, I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been to um, hear everybody's comments and memories. And boy, it's been a lot of laughs. And that's the way it should be for a man who uh, looked at life the way that Scott Neely did. Um, I have recorded this. So um, I will be posting it on Facebook. And so. Um, if you're looking for entertainment, uh, we still have a pandemic to endure. And if you've run out of things to watch on Netflix, um, we've got a two and a half hour show uh, that you may be interested in here. But uh, gosh, to everybody who submitted pictures for my little video or um, video itself, I certainly appreciate uh, what you've done to make that possible. Uh, to put together um, what was obviously for me a labor of love. Um, so, um, Mark, I want yes. to do a fabulous job. Thank you for putting this all together. Uh, we really appreciate all your efforts to make it happen. And uh, you're kind of the glue that keeps everybody here together. So, uh, the best to you. God bless you. And I hope you stay safe and get it. Each other sometime in the future. Well, thanks, Sluggo. Just like an old horse, I'm <laughs> I'm the glue that to keep the group together. Thank you, Mark. I've, I've got a future in this. Can we one more toast to Scott. One toast to Scott. Last one. Yeah, last. Yeah, one. Last yeah. Toast to the life of the party. To the Cheers life of the party, God. and may we all take Smart a break. His humor and his outlook and spread it around groovy baby bye everybody <laughs> thank you for being part of this thank you mark thank and, you uh, mark. we'll talk to you all later thanks thank mark. You so much, mark thank you park thank you. bye steve bye, bye steve everyone. bye love celia you, thank you everyone give, give georgie a big hug love to you all love bye, you steve georgie. lisa bye. mark bye bye thank you, mark. bye all friends oh, one last Look at the uh, gallery. Oh, Jody. Bill. Jody. 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 Jody.